Welcome back to another video everyone. Today I'm gonna show you how to build in Call of Dragons. More specifically, what limitations are there when building and how to build efficiently. Stick with me to the end for the best tips when it comes to building. Let's start with what limitations are there when building towers. The best way to say is to try building one. When you try to build a tower it will tell you are the territories bordering? Yes, it's good. Is the rod length at uh, the limit? The limit being 15 kilometers. It's good, you can build. Let's try in another position. Here, there is a river between this flag and the one that I want to place. Let's say what the game says. It won't let me because the rod length is uh, too high. And if I try here, the loading is even higher, even more so. Even if the territory is bordering, if the rod length is not good enough, I won't be able to place the flag. It's that simple. Let's now take a look at the second limitation, which is the rod limit. So, in Call of Dragons, you have rods, both in Season 1, Season 2, and what we use to have uh, season 1 plus which is of 1200 kilometers so we have the individual limit which is uh, 15 kilometers when trying to build a tower and the total rod limit which is 1200 kilometers the moment you hit the state limit of 102,000 and you try to build another uh, tower the game will tell you that you are not able to build because you don't have any rod left. At that point, you have no choice but to delete uh, some rods to be able to continue building towers. Well, rods are pretty important. First of all, they offer you building Mars, uh, troop Mars speed, which is essential in the front lines because you need your troops to reach the battlefield as fast as you can and because they connect you to villages now this here is interesting uh, the system is made in such a way and i don't understand to this day why they gave you 25 villages when with 1200 kilometers there is no way an alliance can take 25 simply because the rod is not enough uh, which is really awful i i really look forward to some improvements because it's an interesting system with a lot of potential now Let's take a look at the third uh, limitation, which is the Alliance Fortresses. In this game, you can only have three. One Core Fortress, one Alliance Fortress, and another Alliance Fortress. Well, as you can see here, this is the Core Fortress. What's interesting is that the Core Fortress can only be placed in Zone 1. Yes, you heard me. If you try to place the core fortress, for example, in zone 2, which is, let's say, Nuvola, you won't be able to, even if you have territory or anything like that. This is not safe anywhere, you need to find out by yourself. Now, let's try placing an alliance fortress. I can place it, no problem. You see? It's just I need to have territory bordering the Alliance Fortress. Oh, there is territory bordering, it's good. If I try to place it here, for example, let's say here, I won't be able to. Why? Because territory is not bordering. Okay, this here is the interesting part. The core fortress does not need to border the territory at all. The core fortress only needs to be placed in zone 1 and can be moved any single time. Let's take a look 
I will delete it now if there is no problem. If now I try to place the core fortress here, it will say that I can, because the alliance for fortress is the foundation on which all other alliance buildings are built and the starting point for the alliance territory. Okay, let's try placing it in zone 2. Let's see what the game says. Alliance core fortresses can only be built in an alliance affiliate region. This here is not very well explained. What does the affiliated region mean actually? Well, it means the starting location of uh, the leader of the alliance. Yes, uh, basically if somebody starts an alliance in Daralan, they need to, their alliance can only be there, the alliance fortress. Yes, so basically the alliance forces is uh, tied to the zone 1 the leader starts in. Very interesting, right? Okay. Well, what limitation there are is... Uh, yeah, the territory becomes inactive once uh, there is no alliance fort or alliance uh, core fortress tying the territory. You see, it becomes inactive. Great which is uh, really bad. Avoid uh, taking your alliance fort down as much as you can. The core fortress allows you a lot of flexibility which alliance fortress doesn't. So use it with uh, a lot of care. Let's move on now on how to build efficiently. As a territory planner for my family and alliance in the last two seasons, I can say that a good plan for zone one helps a lot, but you can't expect to not improvise, especially in zone two, zone three, because the politics of these games are ever changing. One day you may be fighting in the right side, the sweet it is season, and the next day you may need to help your uh, uh, family on the left side. When uh, planning uh, the starting zone for your family or alliance, it's better to discuss with one or two other persons because it's hard to avoid uh, making mistakes or uh, simply forgetting some stuff. Now, let's take a look at how to build flags efficiently. When building flags, what you need to know is that there's uh, those limitations I spoke about. You also have to look at resources. Yes, flags require resources, which at the start are very important because your uh, production of resources per hour is not big, not at all. Now it should be bigger, but I deleted the core fortress. Now, let's say I try to place a tower here. The game will tell me how much gold per hour, wood, stone and mana will I get by placing it here. This is very important. At the start, the towers will require only gold and wood, and a bit later, also stone. Towers will never require mana. Let's say my tower is. I place. I want to place my tower here. I won't be able. I don't have territory nearby. I don't have uh, bras and all that. But look what the game is telling me. Look just how few resources I will get if I place it here. Why? Simple, because this territory, those uh, squares with resources, are already claimed by this tower. When you build, you want to avoid overlapping those uh, squares as much as you can, because you lose rich, uh, precious resources that are needed in building. Good. Another important thing is that uh, as you progress in game, you will hit the tower limit, I, which I spoke a bit uh, earlier about. 
and if you want to have rods in the front lines where you need you will need to delete from the back from zone one which will simply make you lose some villages there is no way to make to keep uh, some villages you simply have to give up on them if you want to have rods in the front line where it matters i really hope they are going to change this and we will have more rods to work with because the limitation doesn't seem uh, fair and it doesn't make any sense another tip i have for every builder out there or everyone that wants to start building in this game don't be afraid of making mistakes i still remember when i placed my first flag it was a mistake i placed it badly yes but i'm still here i'm still building nothing happened building can be awesome give it a try you won't regret don't be afraid of making mistakes if you like this video like and subscribe